years ago we were trying to get the YMCA off the ground and I'll see this building and it's empty. I call and say hey sure would like to see uh, that building can you tell me what the rent is? Well the rent was more than what I could pay right um, so I just said uh, never mind uh, we'll I'll have to figure out some other plan and the young lady that I was talking to said oh no you need to meet the owner of the building. Um, I think he um, I think you will really enjoy him, and I think this is going to be a good partnership. So I go over there, and I talk to Charlie, and was, um, quite honestly, he stole my heart. <laughs> yes, he is, isn't he? <laughs> and since that time, we were able to move in the building through his awesome generosity. We were able to move in there and really have done some cool things. But Charlie does cool things for us as a whole. Um, when I get to a point where um, I have a problem with self-will, and he will tell you that um, on a regular basis, and he helps me get centered. Uh, this book has been awesome because some of the things that are in it hits me right square between the eyes. Um, what an awesome writer you are. Uh, but more importantly, you're just a great friend, and I love you dearly. Um, I'm excited today about being part of this. Uh, if you haven't read this book, you need to. You need to tell your friends. This morning, I actually was told by a friend of mine in Arkansas to translate to you how important the work is that you're doing through this book. Um, so it's not just here in Bastrop. It's all over the country and all over the world. So thank you. Thank you all for coming out, and thank you for letting me be a part of it. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Terry Moore.
who is the director of our Bastrop Family YMCA, for introducing me. We do share a soul connection, a spiritual connection. Um, a huge thanks to Kimberly and the Living Room Bookstore for hosting uh, this event. It's now my new favorite store. You know, take the place of Nordstrom's. Uh, <laughs> And most of all, I want to thank God for this opportunity to be in His service. Uh, among the questions that I have been asked are, uh, starts with, why did you write recovery? And uh, I tell people that, you know, in a moment of, in a time, there was a time of utter darkness for me and extremely poor health in my life. And I honestly didn't know, I honestly did not know if I was going to live or die. Uh, I didn't know the journey that God had prepared. <clears throat> for me so long ago. And then, <clears throat> by a simple act of faith, I decided to take Jesus Christ at His word. It didn't make me perfect, but it changed the course of my life forever. So I asked God to help me. And I've never stopped asking. I keep asking, keep asking, keep asking. And then I prayed the prayer for productivity. It's on page 197 of your books. <laughs> God, light a fire in me and give me something I can do and do well for your sake. Again, I never stopped asking. Within about three months, I began writing, and I shared my writing in, in the text ministry as I began uh, on this phone writing this book. So I began with the text ministry and it ended up with this book. Another question I get is, what's what's the ministry of nuts? What's with that? You know? Again, I refer to my phone. Uh, I had written a text message to a very dear friend uh, who's st sticking by me as I was going through what I was going through. And um, it came out, the story of the ant and the squirrel which is on page 15 of your books. So I'm going to speak it as if it were the text message that I wrote that day. Again, having just prayed for three months for the prayer for productivity, for God to give me purpose in my life. And after about three months, I wrote this text to my friend. So I'm gardening and I see this ant. He was carrying a piece of mulch that was probably 500 times his size. It must have been something he needed or something in his way. And I thought, how God had given that little ant so much strength. Then I saw a squirrel. He was burying a nut in my garden, of course. I thought, how much hope and faith that squirrel has in the future. He's planting a tree for future squirrel generations he'll never even live to see. So I asked God to give me the spiritual strength of that ant. Give me the hope and faith of that squirrel. God, let me lead your ministry of nuts. And he granted it. And that's why I'm sending you this text. So, that's why I began to write this book. Imagine yourself on the other end receiving in some guy, some crazy guy, writing a text message like that. So the ministry is God-ordained, God-justified, and it's a ministry of hope, faith, and strength. It began with a flicker of hope. It grew into some, finally having some faith and belief. And over time, I gained strength. We all want the resiliency that recovery offers just to get through our daily lives. On page 18 of your books, <laughs> I like that. Uh, I talk about being a practitioner of recovery, and I write, it's unwise to think that the only ones who need recovery are the sinners, sick or injured, get traumatized or addicted. The healthiest among us practice a daily philosophy of recovery. That's how we do it. That's how we get through everything, through each day, by practicing a personal philosophy of recovery, a God-centered philosophy of recovery. We can't do this alone, but with God, Anything. Anything is possible. So, thank you for coming today. Enjoy this store, shop, 
enjoy. It's great to meet all of you. Come shake, I'll shake your hand and sign your books. So thank you for coming.